those freak goals that uh, might happen once in a season, but to very rarely see a goal like that, and that's going to lift South even further. Well, Let's have a look at it again. That's Turner getting the handball over, and watch where Jakovic is. He needs a bit of luck here. It's rolling around and hops and kips and through it goes past the post. The umpire. And uh, that's two uh, great goals, in fact, to Jakovic, and both have been a very similar pattern. And what a great way to welcome our Metropolitan viewers. I hope you enjoyed the last quarter of the first semi-final that finished up a little bit one-sided. But this game is uh, really alive. 12-5 South, Claremont at 9-10, 77 plays 64. Ooh. So South Fremantle lead by 13 points. Souths are kicking into the breeze in the third quarter. At quarter time, it was 5-3 to 5 goals. Claremont led after kicking with the breeze. At half time, it was 10-3 to 7-9. Souths led by two goals. And now they lead by 13 points. So they've extended their half-time lead marginally as the ball goes towards Jakovic, who took his eye off the ball. Malesso has it. He's played pretty well back there in the full back line. Clermont using the ball well. They've kicked two goals so far in this quarter. One from Ralph and one from Brayshaw. As uh, Roland kicks short and finds Evans. Evans goes down towards full forward. And Brayshaw, who's now at centre-half forward, takes the mark. And he kicked his goal from around about this position a little bit further out just a few minutes ago. Well, this is why he polled so well at the Sandover medal, because he's so versatile. Beaten at centre-half back and now right into the game. He kicks from just inside 50 metres this time. Claremont need another one. And I think they've got it. Well, he's just making the distance, but that's all he has to do. And one of the other great attributes that Mark Rayshaw has is that he never throws in the towel. Remember the game at uh, Fremantle Oval when uh, Wilson gave him a dreadful run around in the first quarter and he came back to actually dominate centre-half back that day. Here he has moved from centre-half back to centre-half. There have been great pressure goals by Claremont. Needed badly, kicking with the breeze for the last. Ralph. 15. Edwards won the tap, but Roland sharked it. He set it up here for Thorne. He got a fickle bounce. Now he runs into Derek Collard. Socket on by Scott Edwards. McDonald's fist was prominent. Brad Collard couldn't control it. This is McDonald again. Underground hand pass finds Della. Oh. Through Matera, but Morris Rioli finished up with it. Now it's Edwards to Fimino and South out of trouble. But this oh. will land with John Scott. That's the safest mark of the day. Onto the members' wing. Not a good kick. He'll be the first to arrive. Wilson for South Fremantle. Bumped over by Kicker. It comes to Morris Rioli. This is Della with good run out of defence. Sets it up for his full forward. Jakovic is there. Knocked on by Geary. Mascos is on the ground, but he's beaten by Molesso. Good shepherding by Lewis. The kick to the half-back flanked by Molesso. Lands with Hand, who couldn't quite control it. Over the line and out of bounds. At right half forward for South Fremantle. 10-10 Claremont, 12-5 South, seven points the difference. Yes, I like the look of Peter Molasso at fullback. He's got pace and strength. He was able to hold uh, big Craig Edwards early in the second quarter. 31,700 people here this afternoon, so the double header fixture has been a resounding success. It would have been a considerably bigger crowd, I'm sure, had the weather been more favourable. Beers was clearly held, and the second uh, offence is noticed and Tony Beers will get the free kick. Higgins is off the ground, that's why Beers is on the ground for Claremont. And how many kicks since he's been on the ground, Ken? Kick number five to Tony Beers coming up. He got a kick in the instant he came on the field at the 15 minute mark of the second quarter. Souths lead by seven points and we've played 16 and a half minutes in the third quarter of the second semi-final. As Ryder is dispossessed, the hand pass goes towards Hand in the pocket. He covers a lot of ground, eludes the tackler twice, looks towards full forward, good kick, kick it. Oh, he couldn't hold it. It spilled from his grasp. And that's holding the ball for mine. Play allowed to go on as Ryder sends the hand pass across the face of goal. Solon has it. Souths get out of strife. They kick up towards centre wing, looking for Matera. He's been quiet in this quarter. He was brilliant in the first half. So Claremont under pressure back there. Allen is loose. Now they can do something. They'll look for Ralph. He's been their trump card up forward when kicking to this end of the ground. Kick it will be first to this ball. No one in the square except a South Fremantle player and Ryder. But kick it is well and truly offline. Out of play on the full. Twice in this quarter, out of, out of bounds on the full from Kickett. He's brilliant, but he's wasting a bit of that opportunity. That's Turnbull number 50 for Claremont. I'm just wondering who's going to come off as the 
kick in is marked by Brayshaw again. Thorne goes to Mitchell. He's in strife. Hand passes to Mann. Mann's in strife. This is Allen. Allen, an unnecessary hand pass. Rioli has it. He was almost caught. Down, uh, Sam Brelo knocks it back to the 50 metre line. It comes to Scott Edwards. They need something positive out of all this, and that's not positive. That gives uh, Turner the chance to tie it up. Hand is there. He was being held. Heavens above, you can't let the obvious free kicks go. Again, he's been allowed to play on when he was being retarded. A one handed punch is a throw. He saw that. Well, he, was, he saw it all. They just decided the umpires free kicks. It kicks at an absolute premium. And the umpires have yeah. just decided to let the, let the free kicks go. And uh, you saw, what, I suppose three obvious ones there. Near, that's only the 17th free kick for both sides of the match. Nine to Claremont as Allen shoots inaccurately. Nine to Claremont and eight to South Fremantle. Well, Claremont have had 20 scoring shots, 21 scoring shots to 17. And they still trail. But the margin is now just one straight goal. As uh, Kevin Mitchell comes off the ground and Ryan Turnbull goes back on. And South's prepared to bring the ball back into play through Matt Sambrello. A little bit indecisive when putting the ball back into play, Sambrello. This time he favours the members' flank. Nolder couldn't hold it. Allen, another chance for Nolder. Knocked it to Della. Well done, Merv Della. Willie Rioli now, right centre wing. Punts to half forward. Claremont should mark. Oh, good effort by Turnbull just back on the ground. Did very well, didn't he, for a big man to get down that low? He kicks towards the middle of the ground. Robert Solon sets himself and almost pulls down a beautiful mark. Morris Rioli went charging through. Thorne's got it. And he got a high tackle. And he'll drive Claremont forward again. Allen's loose. Allen chips it into the pocket. Not a good kick. Too wide for man. That's a boundary throw in 50 metres out from the Tigers' goal, going very indirectly around the boundary towards the target. At the last place you'd want to be with this southwesterly breeze is in the member stand pocket. That's the dead pocket. So not well played, Ben Allen. Six points in favour of South, the lead. 20 minutes gone. Nolder got up high then again. McDonald to Woody Rioli. The Bulldogs out of trouble. It's back to the wing. Good contest here. Jakovic and Beers. Now hand chipping across the front of the pack. Goes inboard. This is Scott. With good vision, he finds Roland. There's a lot of method in Claremont's play, isn't there? Especially when they're under pressure. Ten metres, the attacking side of the circle. Offloads a wobbly punt. Wilson flies. So did Ooh, Evans. Oh, right. Evans has been paid. 25 metres out, directly in front. This will be a handy one for the Tigers. There's not much he can't do, Tony Evans. Oh, he's going to be a good player, isn't he, Keith? I think he's in the side as a rover. He has no trouble in getting up and taking the big mark. And, of course, uh, his left foot kicking is an absolute treat. And he's uh, just a little underestimated as a footballer, this lad. For our Metropolitan viewers, it's going to be very hard to pick the mark of the day today. There's been some beauties. You'll see them all tomorrow on Football Sunday. Evans chips, truly, the Claremont. The scores are level here at Subiaco Oval. That's three goals now to Evans. Claremont 11-11-77, south of 12-5-77, and tied ball games have been the flavour of the day. Evans flies, and that is a very good mark. Yes, it was, and uh, yes, we've seen uh, some very good football, and the Claremont are back to uh, their normal composure now. They lost their way a little in the second quarter when South's pace worried them, but now they're hunting in packs. They always have four or five players where the ball is, and it's paying dividends for them. Turner about to come off the ground and Worsfold about to go back on as Mann wins the knock down to Nisham but he was dispossessed Nolder kicks it to the half forward line Collard not able to mark Lewis overran it for Claremont Beers with a hand pass across to Begovic Claremont get out of trouble they get it to the half forward line again McDonald couldn't pull it in Nolder taking a long time to pick it up brilliantly read by Allen he was held play allowed to go on kick it running alongside him he bounced it the umpire's whistle's gone and an illegal shepherd by Ben Allen and he hasn't had a good day now the umpire was right next to that so you would have to say that he certainly saw what happened the Nolder has had a good day yes Nolder's played very well at both center half forward and now on the ball chance here for Turnbull if he can pick it up they need a kick Claremont oh, why do that Edwards well and truly caught this is Beresford Brayshaw's loose if they can get it to him at center half forward Roland has it Ralph chipped in in front. 
and we've seen some fabulous goal kicking from Warren Ralph. He opts not to go for goal this time. He sees Allen just a little bit closer and Ben Allen has taken the mark as Turner comes off the ground and he was replaced, as I said, by Peter Worsfold. Classical style of marking and kicking does Warren Ralph and as that bullet light pass going in, he was just too far out himself. Allen within range, you would think. Now it's been a long time since Claremont were in front in this game, but this kick should give them the lead, and he's hit the post. It's still given them the lead by a solitary point. And I would think at best they've got about seven minutes left with the wind in this game. Claremont, it's not really a wind, it's, it's a breeze. Okay. But it's a handy breeze. Yeah, Jared Neesham has uh, attended to his problem area very well in this quarter. That's uh, Craig Edwards in the ruck who was giving his uh, smaller players a pretty good ride. He's alternating man and Turnbull on the ball now, and he's cut off any knocks that Edwards gets out of the centre. Centre. The kick into play from Sam Brelo. Turnbull is there. Comes down to Wilson. Wilson kicks to the half forward line. Mascos in front. Begovic the leaper. Beers. Mascos knocked it on well. Scott will be gets to it first. Avoids the tackle. Kicks to centre wing. No one wanted to go for it except Wilson. That's given Souths a chance. Here's Jakovic by hand to Matera. Mascos ahead of the play. It was out. Yes, good decision. Mascos was out. And the umpire hasn't noticed it. The umpire hasn't noticed it. Oh, you've got to bring it back, boundary umpire. <laughs> yes, exactly. Arthur Mascos was clearly standing out on the field of play. That's good boundary umpiring. He was under a bit of pressure then, that uh, boundary umpire. Umpire Nolan. As Nolder, uh, sorry, Jakovic contested the boundary throw in. Beers is tied up in there. And there will be a bounce down at right half forward for Souths. Souths hanging on grimly. We go into time on period while, and this is a very vital period of play. Claremont are 11-12, Souths are 12-5, Claremont lead by a point, uh, yes, Claremont lead by a point as Jakovic's hand pass is stolen by Allen, a clever kick put out in front of Han, Han needs to do something with this kick as he puts it to the half forward line, Brayshaw not able to pull it in but good support from Mann, now Thorne is running hard to Brayshaw again, he goes short looking for a teammate, Ralph and Kickett got mixed up in there, extricating himself from the pack of Sambrello who's holding the ball! It comes to Allen, who appeared to be held by the leg, and that's deliberate, surely. Oh. You're pretty tough on that one, Wal. <laughs> well, he the just went tripped over, the I think. I think the guy tripped over. He had to try and do something so he's worse than that. Claremont lead by a point. The throw-in is in their forward pocket. That's Ryder. His kick was smothered. Everyone in on top of the ball. There's a and head there. will be a bounce down in the pocket. <laughs> a black head will get up out of that. One remarkable aspect of this game this afternoon is that Sandover medalist Craig Edwards hasn't taken a mark. Statistician Ken Casillas. It's pretty tight down there. Ryder scrambles at the Solon. South should get it out of trouble now. Wilson went looking for the boundary. Keeps it in play. Now it's with Ham. He cuts in board. Well done, Mark Ham. Now he squares it up. But to nobody in particular, Brad Collard had Scott Edwards covered. It lands back with Evans. Is that number four? certainly is. Very clever kick. He's done a few of those today and he's also taken some very solid knocks. So Claremont stretched their lead. 84 plays 77. Mark, Mark Hand breaking uh, several tackles on that occasion centering the ball. Always some risk involved there but that's Scott Edwards and uh, bang onto the foot and Evans has put one through and what a play he's been. He's made the most of his opportunities and I like the way Claremont have worked their way back into this game. It hasn't been all breeze. It's been their very methodical style of football. Down to earth, methodical style of football has brought them back into the game. That's Nolder and Turnbull, two youngsters. Collard, dispossessed. Knocked on by Claremont, but it lands with Solon. Solon's kicked to half forward. Lewis up. No mark with him is Geary. Oh, well done, Cam Lewis. Back to Tony Bears. Neat little tap. Now the kick to half forward, Brayshaw's in front. The fist was from McDonald, landed with Solon. Back to Ryder. Ryder with good vision finds Morris Rioli at half forward. He plays on quickly, goes towards full forward. The target is Edwards, Scott up in front. Crashes to the ground with a pack on top of him. This is Matera from 25 metres. He pulls it back, but not enough. Willie Rioli! Oh. Great attempt to mark by the little fellow. A 
to say that to Keith. I said, are you enjoying it? He said, I'm having a great time. <laughs> he had a lovely diamond in his right earring too, didn't he? I didn't notice that, Ken. Yeah. Let me get that close. Edwards, beaten by Turnbull. Nisham through the traffic was good football to Scott. Sends him away. He loves a run. He's working this right out of defence. Good run from John Scott. He's travelled about 60 metres already. Good shepherding here from Allen, yes, on Morris Rioli. Allows Scott to run to the wing. That's a great piece of football. Oh. The kick not equal to the occasion. Yeah. Now he's got to run back <laughs> and quickly. Nolder. That's when it's hard. Goes to centre wing. Collard has the mark. Brad Collard kicks to the half forward line for Souths. Jakovic. There's some pressure on Claremont here at the moment. They wouldn't want to concede a goal in the dying minutes of this quarter as Molesso gets over the top of Edwards. Play on is the call. Edwards is not happy. Roland goes down under a late tackle. Players tied up at centre wing. Wilson gets the hand pass to Della. In pursuit is Kickett. They chip it back towards Mascos who takes the mark. He Oops. played on, he shouldn't have. He's gone to Worsfold. Worsfold gets around Roland. He's still got some more work to do. Well played by the Claremont defence. Although it's not over yet. Mascos hooks into the pocket. But gee, you have to admire the Claremont back line. There have been a couple of chances this afternoon for, Cle for South to kick what appear to be easy goals but they really have kept the pressure on. It can only happen if you've got players where the ball is, and they really make a very strong effort to get there. And uh, when you've got three or four or five players around the ball, you can make the tackles, you can make mistakes and still get out of it. And that's how Claremont have done it in this quarter. 29 minutes gone in this third quarter. Claremont lead by six points. The ball tied up on the half forward line for Souths. A hurried kick back towards full forward. Leesham is there. Fairly handy player to have in a crisis. They still got four players around the ball when Nisham took that. I thought I heard the siren. I think it was just the crowd booing. That'll probably just lift him. Turnbull gets to it first. He's being harassed by Della. Brilliant. Well played, young man. He then eludes the tackle from Worsfold. Uses the ball astutely. This is Hand. No one to kick it to. He would be well advised to go as far as he can. Brayshaw was up. Brilliantly taken by Brad Collard. Ryder provides the support. And he in turn decides to have a run. Kicks to set a half forward. Molesso is there with Edwards. Scott misses what he should have taken. He needs to do something with it now. Nisham is caught. Gets it off to Beards. And I've heard the siren this time. And that marks three-quarter time at Subiaco Oval. And what a second semi-final it's been. Clement at 12-12. Souths at 12-6. The Tigers lead by six points. Souths will have the breeze in the last quarter. And I reckon with the amount of football that you've called today, you'll be hearing sirens at midnight tonight. <laughs> you'll be getting up and looking for them, I reckon. You've done a marvellous job here today, Wal. As uh, three-quarter time, see some fairly tired players uh, move to their respective huddles. As goal scorers for South Fremantle. Firstly for Claremont, the leaders at three-quarter time. Three to Warren Ralph. Four to Tony Evans. He's the leading goal scorer on the field. And a two to Mark Brayshaw. Four to Warren Ralph, Trev. Four to Ralph as well. So he's equal with Tony Evans. And for South Fremantle, Peter Matera and Richard Geary have both kicked three goals. Spectacular game of football. Hope you're enjoying it live on ABC television. Our statistician, Ken Casillas. And Ken, um, who've been the leading kick getters for three-quarter time? Thanks, Trev. Well, you couldn't ask to see a better uh, game of football. Ben Allen, the leading kick getter at three-quarter time. The Claremont sentiment. He's had 17 kicks. He had uh, eight kicks in the third quarter. So he shows the way. Of the other Claremont players, Han on his wing has had 13. Scott Edwards has had eight. Higgins off the field injured early, two. Melissa so six with five marks. Scott Rowland, six marks and 13 kicks, and he's been quietly efficient. Nisham, six, six to kick it. Four to Mitchell, Thorn, ten. Evans, 12, in a fine return to the league side. Turnbull, three marks and five kicks. Brayshaw, six marks and nine. Scott, ten. Begovic, ten. Cam Lewis, four. Beresford, three, and Beers, seven. For South Fremantle, Ryder in a back pocket as Stan Magro talks to his men at three-quarter time. Ryder's had 15 kicks. Peter Matera's had 11 with six hand passes. Dick Geary's had eight kicks. McDonald five, Jakovic four, Robert Solon eight, Ned Fimino three, Peter Worsfold eight, Matt Sambrello five, Troy Wilson four, Dean Irving four marks and five kicks. Dean Nall has taken seven marks. He's the leading mark taker in the match up to three-quarter time. He's also had eight kicks. Derek Collard, six kicks only. Not enough from this rover from South. 
but Willie Rioli's been a good rover with five marks and 15 kicks. Merv Della 11, Mascos 1. Craig Edwards hasn't taken a mark. He's had seven kicks, ten effective ruck knockouts. Turner's had three kicks only. Morris Rioli's had nine kicks and seven hand passes. And Brad Collard, a good solid game on a wing with nine kicks and ten effective hand passes. And a very few free kicks awarded up to three-quarter time. The tally, Claremont 9, South Fremantle 9. Those statistics provided for us by Ken Casalis. Well, what a brilliant game of football it's been so far. At quarter time, the margin was three points in favour of Claremont. At half time, South's led by 12 points. And here we are at three quarter time with this team, Claremont, leading by six points. And one of the reasons that they're in front and one of the reasons they're able to kick five goals in that third quarter was the performance of their young and diminutive rover in Tony Evans. But he's not just good on the ground and around the goals, he's also very good in the air, as we saw during the course of that third quarter the pressure. 10 metres the attacking side of the circle. Offloads a wobbly punt. Wilson flies. So did oh, Evans. Oh, Evans has been paid. 25 metres out directly in front. This will be a handy one for the Tigers. There's not much he can't do, Tony Evans. Oh, he's going to be a good player, isn't he, Keith? I think he's in the side. Kicking is an absolute treat. And he's uh, just a little underestimated as a footballer, this lad. For our Metropolitan viewers, it's going to be very hard to pick the mark of the day today. There's been some beauties. You'll see them all tomorrow on Football Sunday. Evans chips truly the Claremont. We've seen some incredible marking during the course of this game. Uh, Dale Kicker took two beauties. Tony Begovic took a spectacular mark. Uh, Cam Lewis took a beauty. That one from Evans. It's been some really good marks. And we've seen some really good goal kicking also. A great display of skills. During that third quarter, Claremont outscored, outscored South Fremantle five goals to two. And I'm sure Keith Slater, through his best players, can tell us why. Yes, it was a very good quarter by Claremont and a very good piece of coaching by uh, Jared Neesham because he had a problem with Craig Edwards, as most sides have had this year. And he was pushing the ball out and allowing South to break away from the centre. And all of a sudden, uh, we saw that uh, South were looking very good and he had to stop that. He alternated man and turn ball in the ruck and they did a very good job. But better than that, he placed his men on the ground so that South just didn't get any clean takeaways to centre on that occasion he, on the, in that quarter, even when... Uh, Edwards was winning the knock and I thought it was a very good piece of captaincy because Jared Neesham knew that he had a problem in that area but looking at good players I thought for Claremont Mann continued to play very solidly indeed and he together with Turnbull did an excellent job in the ruck and uh, they're big talented players they have a lot of skill they mark well kick well can play like a rover when they've got to and they both have very bright futures Tony Evans well he's underestimated as a footballer he's been quite brilliant here today he's taken high marks he's roved superbly and he's kicking especially a goal has been outstanding Molesso at fullback has been a tower of strength and his, his strength has been very handy when Edwards has been back there. Alan Thorne kicking have all played very well. Roland for South Fremantle I thought uh, Willie Rioli played an excellent third quarter and has just about emerged as South's best player. Ryder a very good defender. Collard, Matera excellent players. Morris Rioli came into the game very strongly in that quarter as did Robert Solon and uh, Dean Nald has been quite a serviceable centre half forward to come Ruckman. Well, the Clusters are breaking up here for their three-quarter time. And uh, thanks a lot to Keith Slater for best players on the ground. So six points the difference at the present time. Claremont 12, 12, 84. South Fremantle 12, 6, 78. We'll go down to Greg Keeley in a moment to find out what the respective coaches had to say. In the meantime, let's have a look at this passage of play involving Kevin Mitchell. Well, this, in fact, was a mark to Kevin Mitchell, and it was another spectacular grab. We've really seen a fine display of the skills and the features of this game, this Australian football game this afternoon. And that was just another as Kevin Mitchell and Peter Higgins go into the dugout. Let's go down to ground level now and see what Greg Keeley was able to find out during the three-quarter time break. Thanks, fellas. Well, we've just been in the huddles for the respective teams. Jared Neesham has told his side they must look downfield and get a bit more run in their legs in this last quarter, and they've got to compete with increased determination. He's asked them, if they're 30 metres away from the player with the ball, to chase that player and, uh, and try and just commit themselves that little bit more. Stan Magro, he was fairly pleased with a good start in that third quarter, but a little disappointed how they started to slack off and became just a little bit disorganised. He said they must work as a team and look for their teammates. The news from the uh, Claremont camp is that uh, Peter Higgins, he may be out for the rest of the season. The club are not optimistic. It seems his inside left ankle needs about three weeks to uh, heal. Back to you, fellas.
Claremont start the final quarter with a six-point lead and they get the ball into their forward line. The ball running free, a chance here for Ralph Sambrello behind him and Ralph runs it across the boundary line. Claremont 12-12-84, South Fremantle 12-6-78. That was the scoreline at three-quarter time. Malesso, sorry, Turnbull does the ruck work for Claremont. Kickett comes in, tries to wrestle the ball away from Ryder. From, no, it's not Ryder, it's Collard. And there'll be a bounce down about 40 metres out from the Claremont goal. Umpire ball in control. Edwards gets the ball to the side of the pack. No one able to break away with it. The umpire letting it go. Kickett comes in and... Again, the ball will be bounced in almost the same position, about 40 metres out from Claremont's goal. Edwards and Turnbull. Turnbull trying to make better position. Edwards' kick is smothered. It bounced out of Ralph's hands. This is Wilson. Troy Wilson did too much. Was lucky not to be penalised. McDonald kicks to the centre of the ground. Good position shown by Beers. Clever positioning. Now Beers goes for distance. A telling kick. Brayshaw almost the mark. Thorne, no one to give it to. Kick it, knocks it wide to Brayshaw. He dropped it. Gee, there's some pressure out there. It's socket off the ground by South Fremantle. Comes to Scott Edwards. Good shepherding provided by Mann. Edwards took his time, but kicks back towards the goal line. Ooh. That strong defensive work done by Wilson again. What are his stats today, Ken? Well, he's taken two marks he's had this will be his fifth kick and he's made six effective hand passes but he's been an efficient defender a dependable defender who will they pay the man in front always Femina Solon bounces his way through a player South building up well Worsfold has it again the hand pass to Nolder was a good tackle applied on him and in they go on top of them no free kick forthcoming again it really has been hard to get a kick here this afternoon Quite a different umpire style, umpiring style to what we're used to. That was brilliantly played by Mark Han. He ran past about three players onto about the third receiver and got there in time. The sun's shining at Subiaco Oval and that hasn't been the case for most of the afternoon. As Claremont gained possession, the ball runs free. Mascos was a chance. Oh. Now Nisham, too much aerial ping pong. It's hard to control the ball when you're knocking it around like that, particularly in a pressure cooker situation. As the kick from Collard goes to set a half forward, the mark is missed there by Beers. They go in on top of him and there'll be a bounce down at set a half forward for South Fremantle. 12-12 to 12-6. Nalder doing the ruck work, opposed by Mann. Mann knocks it straight down to Beers. Beers gets it to Han. Han can go to Allen. Again he goes one hand. Perhaps he was at full stretch then. He was tackled when he didn't have the ball. Play allowed to go on in towards centre half forward where Souths have the numbers. Chance here for them. That's it. That player was Geary. Still play allowed to go. Roland gets out of the pack well. Looking to give the hand pass further upfield. Thorne has it. Good shepherd provided by Edwards. Thorne, I thought he tried to do too much. The kick's important. Intended for Brayshaw. Play still allowed to go on. Collard has it. Little reward to the man in front at the moment. This is Worsfold. Hand in pursuit. Got him in the nick of time. That pulled him off the kick. And the relieving mark is taken down there by Begovic. Begovic into the middle of the ground and finds Peter Mann. Over the top to Beresford. Thought about the hand. Is there, got a hand to it and forces the behind. Young supporter waving his flag proudly. A really tight game indeed. Not an inch being given, not an inch expected. So Ryder now with the important job of putting this back into play. Right from the edge of the square, Edwards. His first mark for the match. Had his name on it too, Ken. And it wasn't a bad one either. Edwards kicks to centre wing. Out there is Geary, Willie Rioli underneath it. Now it's hand, tackled by Rioli. Holding the ball, the decision. Quick thinking by the little fellow. Why have been pretty consistent with that little lot today. If you're over the ball, you're in control. Kick number 16 coming up for Willie Riol. The top game, brilliant third quarter. Options have been closed up. There's a lead now from Jakovic. That's the way it goes. It's spoilt by Malesso. Crumbs to Scott. Cuts in board and gives it to Nisham. Port. 
holding the ball, the decision. Morris Rioli's had a quiet day. There's a player down now. Well, he's been pretty effective. John Scott. Yeah, I don't know. You can see what happened there. That's a good kick to to Nalder. It's just... a half forward. Nalder can go again. This is Brad Collard into the pocket, 30 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking uh, the finesse of Jared Neesham, he's a very clever player. Derek but, Collard. But there was one a little more clever, and uh, that was Morris Rioli, Mr Magic himself. So Derek Collard now can kick the football. That's not a good one. Offline, won't reach. Nolda! Spectacular! He'll be on an angle. But he's only about five or six metres out. Just one of many. And uh, how many marks, Ken? Seven or eight marks to Nolder? That was his ninth mark, Keith. Where did you see Craig Edwards has only taken one mark? Men like uh, Dean Nolder have come to the party. That was his ninth mark. Irving, before he got uh, injured, took four marks. Yes, yeah, that's a very good mark indeed. He's played at centre half forward. He's played in the ruck. And he's been a very valuable player. And South had a very big abundance of big players don't they and have a look at the angle of this lot yeah, they'll have to be Houdini Trev to sneak this through I think well Houdini could do quite a good few things Nolda Banana kick on goal yes yeah. well that tops off a very good game for Dean Nolda and that's a goal under pressure for South Fremantle that is going to make the job for Claremont just a little bit more difficult now well that's just about been everything. That's Norla coming back with the flight of the ball and taking a very good mark indeed. He ran a long way to take that mark. And uh, I don't know what else this game could supply. Wallace just about had the lot, hasn't it? Couldn't be a draw, could it? We've seen every mark we've seen. We've seen the freak goal from Jakovic down the other end where he dribbled it through from right on the boundary line. We've seen Kickett at his very best, material best. And uh, it's been a sensational game of football. We're seven minutes, 26 seconds into the final quarter of the second semi-final. And on. Claremont leads South by a point. Mann gets a big knock towards centre-half forward. Intercepted by Fimino, and in turn his kick intercepted by Beers. He's been valued since he's come on. Yes, he's played well, Tony Beers. Lends some experience to the Claremont side. He's found Thorne. Thorne on the half-back line. Kicks it out in, in front of Beers again. Beers kicks to centre half forward, Ryder and Evans. Evans could almost have, or should almost have marked that as it turned out. He's got Ryder tied up pretty well. In turn, kick it's got McDonald tied up. And the umpire elects to bounce it just outside Claremont's 50 metre line. Young Tyros, Ryder and Evans, not giving an inch. 25 shots, scoring shots to 19. Claremont have had the most scoring shots. There's a free kick, surely. Yep, and paid. Scott Edwards was held when he didn't have the ball. Claremont with 25 scoring shots to 19 and they lead by only a point. Man is loose. And that's the way the kick's gone, a big responsibility on well, Fimino. Man has got it. Here's Fimino a lot shorter. We'll have a good look at him because he is a star of the future. He's a star in his own right now. He is, but he's a star of the future too, Ken. He's just got everything, this lad. He's mobile for a big fellow, isn't he? Yeah, but a young fellow named Turnbull, not too far behind. So, a very important kick here. As Peter Mann lines up from 45 metres, he's missed. Well and truly, he's got a point for Claremont, and that's all. 12-14 to 13-6. You were saying how much taller than his father, Ryan Turnbull, is. What about Peter Mann and his father? Yeah. He played in the 1964 Grand Final. Now, hang Claremont. on, there's, there's been a, a goal square infringement here, and I think the umpire is indicating that he was out of the square before he kicked the ball to himself. And I think that would be the, the case. I think Sam Brelo was actually out of the square when he kicked the ball to himself, and he must do that inside the square, of course. So there's a bounce at the top of the Claremont goal square. Edwards wanted that, put that through for a point, and he's put it out of play. I was say, Walt, there's lots of sons of in the game. Yes, there is at Ray the Shaw, Mann, Turnbull, Scotty, Scott, Scotty Edwards, Lewis. Scott, Jeremy Gard, who's not playing today, of course. But yes, there's plenty of them. Edwards and Turnbull. Socket away oh, by dangerous. Ascos. Roland maintained his footing. Another important kick and he's oh. hit the post. The margin is three points. Mind you, we've had the lot also. We've had a goal that wasn't a goal today. Yes, in the earlier game. Viewers. Yes, in the earlier game, Craig Nelson kicked what was certainly a goal. The cameras were right behind it, as were the commentators, and a large percentage of the grandstand, or the crowd. 
by Edwards. That's dangerous. I wish they'd take clean possession of it, these players, as Rowland kicks to the goal square. Evans, who's got a good leap for a little fellow. It comes down to the front of the pack, and Ralph, Ralph hooks back towards goal, and he's out and put it out on the full. So Claremont peppering the goal, but not able to extend their lead by any significant margin. I would think they'd need a goal out of all this. If South were to rush the ball up the other end and kick a goal, it would put them in front, and that would be very disheartening for Claremont. Well, their forward line is very open, very open, and the times they've caught Claremont out today is when they've rebounded the ball very quickly. Matt Sambrello kicks it around the members' side of the ground looking for Craig Edwards, and they're able to spoil him effectively. Collard threw the ball away. The attempt was there, and Morris Rioli gets a high tackle. Rioli with the free kick at left half back. Looking for leads on the centre line. Nalder is the target. Beers and Lewis. That was well done. Now Mann has it. He kicks without looking. Gives Ryder the chance to hold it up. Ralph got there well. The ball running free. Rioli has it. He was well tackled. Ryder over the ball. In goes Ralph. He's on the ball. And the umpire says, I'll bounce it just inside the 50 metre line for Claremont. 12-15, Claremont 87. Souths are 13 6, 84, and we've played nearly 12 minutes in the final quarter. Now this side giving an inch. One's had the feeling all day that South just had the edge on Claremont. Doesn't show on the scoreboard yet, though. Went through Edwards' legs, right at a Fimino. In come the troops. Emerging with Thorne, scrambled a kick that's been Ooh. marked by Robert Solon in defence. Rayshaw arriving a bit late. Solon plays on quickly, Mascos providing the lead. So South now can run this out of defence. Mascos going for a gallop, runs to half back, kicks towards the outer side of the ground. Begovic had the set. Brilliant run. Rioli to Della. Della drives the Bulldogs into attack. Derek Collard and Scott. Big fist over the top from John Scott. Great defence, out of bounds, 25 metres out. Brilliant roving, Willie Rioli taking the ball on the full off the, off the hands and never missing a stride. South look dangerous now, they're kicking with the breeze. It's not quite as strong as it's been for some of the day today though. Willie Rioli, the danger man, 25 metres out. Back he goes, Nalder a snap. Oh, he's having a great game. No, he's missed on this occasion. He nearly was. Well, he still is having a great game, don't worry about that. Played brilliantly today, Nalder. Oh. Greg Turner on the bench. John Scott with the job of putting it back into play, favours the outer side. Mann's got plenty of run on his legs, spoiled by Worsfold then. Good contest out there. Peter Worsfold doing well. This is 60 metres around now from the south goal. They still trail by two points. Nalder, well done. Brad Collard, Matera. There's the kick to the square, setting himself Molesso. Destroyed it well. It's bottled up down there, and that Lewis, I don't think, really wanted to be camped over the top of it. They couldn't do much about it. South pretty well situated, a kick behind the game. Three players perched back there. Edwards, one of them, Fimino. Important bounce. Knocked it at the square. Scott will clear for Claremont. Just in time. Rolling to the boundary. Scott Edwards arrives first. Inboard for Begovic. Begovic to the members' flank. Providing the lead, Turnbull. Maintains front position, got a fickle bounce. Allowed McDonald back in. Tunnel ball to his own advantage was good football. Then on to Della. Della from forward of left centre wing. But it's all Claremont here. Oh, Lewis misses what he should have taken. Allows Della to come back. Back comes Begovic. It's fed out to Nisham. Nisham goes back to Scott. Claremont out of trouble again. Not yet, they're not. The kick into the centre of the ground. Oh, Roland with a great shepherd has taken Nalder out. And that's an important player that's gone down. I don't mean to be unfair or unjust, but it was perfectly fair. It was a good shepherd. There was another Claremont player running at the ball. And Roland with the shepherd. But to Nalder's credit, he's got straight back up on his feet. Gee, that was a very solid hip and shoulder from Scott Roland. Let's see it again. Here it is. Let's have another look at it. And that's one of the great attributes that, or one of the assets that Scott Rowland lends to this Claremont side. A little bit of physical presence. Matera has been awarded the free kick at right centre wing. Claremont lead by two points. Over 15 minutes gone in the final quarter of the second semi-final. Ben Allen accepts the hand pass on the half-back line and Thorne will take the mark. And 
just hold things up a little bit. It's no good counting the clock down. There's still a lot more scoring needs to be done before this game will be won. But Claremont used the ball very well. This is Begovic. He crosses the centre line. And that's a telling kick. Brayshaw will be the, the target at the back of the pack, and he fought strongly in front of the pack. Tied it up on the 50-metre line, but Souths get it clear of the pack. Fimino's kick will land in the centre with Allen. Not too many leads on offer. Thorne is loose at centre-half forward. Evans is loose out on the outer side of the ground. That was a good kick, and Evans has got enough room to move. He kicks back towards the goal square. Again, it's Brayshaw who has to leap, and it's gone through for a point. Neither side able to get the goal that will just give them that little bit of breathing space. It won't give South too much breathing space, but it will at least give them back the lead. No one at the top of the goal square. Could no. be a draw, Keith. That's Only possible. one goal, Keith, uh, in the first 16 and a half minutes of this last quarter. Well, it's been tight, real tight. Good kick into players, found Solon. Now Brad Collard, he feigned the hand pass, kicks towards centre wing, and brother Derek. He kick. knocked it on cleverly to Worsfold. Worsfold kicks to centre half forward for Souths. Molesso and Jakovic. Back goes Lewis. First back to it, in fact, will be Molesso. And he can't control it close to the line. The throw will take place about 40 metres around from South from Antle's goal. How would it appeal against the light go here? <laughs> well, it's getting late, isn't it? getting a bit gloomy. There you see Glenn Jakovic. My word, he's bleeding profusely from a cut to somewhere. Nalder was the leaper. Goals really are at a premium so far in this final quarter. In fact, throughout this game. And kicks hard to earn, Ken. Yes, and the only goal this quarter so far at the seven-minute mark to Dean Nalder. 12-16 to 13-7. Claremont lead by three points. 17 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter of the second semi. Turnbull gets it down, but it was sharked. It goes towards a vacant oh. goal square. Well, it wasn't a vacant goal square, I'm sorry. I didn't see Scott camouflaged in the crowd. It looks like Jakovic has a cut to the side of his head. Yeah, Scott, past, past feeling the players now, Walt. Scott only, forcing it through for a point. Their only intention now to win the game for their side. He stabs the pass in and finds Nisham. Nisham goes short to the outer side of the ground. It's not a good kick. Thorne wasn't able to get to it. It's gone out on the bounce. So Claremont have relinquished possession. The throw will take place just outside 50 metres. Nalder up. Good knock to Willie Rioli. Back through the pack he went. Chips the good pass to Matera. And this kick could give South from Adel a lead. And around about the 19 minute mark of the final quarter. I like Matera better on a running shot. He's missed a couple of set shots today. Amazing how he's gone out of the game today, Keith. Yes, he started absolutely brilliantly. His play, pace was explosive and he was proving a big problem for Claremont. He's kicked three. One of them was a brilliant solo run. That was in the first quarter. Here he is in the fourth quarter with a shot at goal that could give Souths the lead, but he's missed. He's never going to kick that. I just wonder if Peter Matera doesn't, doesn't know how to pace himself in a game, Keith. So well, often we see him brilliant in the first half. I spoke to him about that earlier in the season, while, and he agreed that uh, he's had trouble finding the right level of pace throughout a game and uh, that was a, an awful attempt by Matera Scott puts it back into play Turnbull's there wrestling with Solon, was fold at the back cuts in board, South still press on, yeah. Boris Rioli hit on the chest 50 metres out that and is, this will go very close that is dangerous, that is very dangerous indeed not much breeze, the breeze has dropped away and uh, about as far as he'd want to kick I reckon Morris Rioli but if anyone bobs up on lead, they're a fair chance of getting it down their throat. Rioli, deliberate shot. Drop punt on its way. Sighting goalward. And through the middle. South Fremantle hit the front. 19 minutes and 50 seconds into the last term. South 49 at 93. Lead Clemont 12 16 88. And Morris Rioli take a bow. The champions do under pressure. And the pressure gold is needed to be kicked, they kick it. And it's what Claremont did in the third quarter. And they're trailing South rather badly. They came back and they kicked the important goal. You said two gems from Ralph, one from Brayshaw, and the Claremont were back in the game. Now South's turn to kick the big ones. And uh, Claremont no doubt will respond. No clean tap out of the middle. Mascos, Fimino, 
gets it onto his boot. Matera's in front. Oh, that's a strong mark. That's really rode him closely. Matera, wobbly punt. Hard to mark this ball. Up they go. Melesso had a purchase on it. Beresford. Desperation, Willie Rioli. Emerging is Geary. He scrambles at the wards full forward. Oh, it bounced away from Melesso. Back to Collard, who suckers it. And now Scott puts Collard out of business and emerges with the football. Confronted by Djakovic. Handball. Begovic. Good ball handling. Close to the boundary. Hugs the boundary with a kick. Man comes to meet it. Knocked away by Matera. He's now back on the scoreboard wing. But he's got time and he's got vision. Willie Rioli with the mark. He thought about going. But he's going to take his time. 21 and a half minutes gone. Still plenty of time. You can't afford to waste time. They're not far enough in front. As Rioli looks for an alternative. And there's one in the form of Craig Edwards. They didn't gain a great deal. Now he goes to Fimino. They've taken the ball right across the ground. They've still got possession. Bit negative. No closer to goal. Now, Morris Rioli is telling them to kick it long. There was a big gap there, and John Scott dropped into it. The Very kick was intended sound. for Nalder. Now, this is going to be really interesting from here. Look at Mears the open forward line. He's called to play on. Tough. The kick is a beauty. Hand. He wanted to go. Oh, Allen, one hand again. How many times has he done that today? Evans lost control of it. Fimino has it. Souths get out of trouble. They were let off by a Ben Allen mistake. This is Derek Collard. The South crowd rises as it goes towards full forward. Melesso got his hand to it. This is Geary. He's run down. Shrugs the tackle. He's got to get out of another one. Couldn't. Close to the line. The players are very tired, they're making mistakes, but I agree with you, Walt. We've seen Ben Allen go many times today with that one hand. Throw in on the 50-metre line with Souths in attack. They lead by five points. It's like a rugby scrum, a collapsed rugby scrum. Morris Rioli using a bit of weight fairly judiciously there, and he's a man that South will rely on very heavily in the last ten minutes of this match. Put a free can on Played a little bit of rugby, did Morris Rioli back in Darwin. Clock running down, 23 minutes gone. Well, I'm not sure what they're screaming. It sounds like Claremont, but it's been a fairly pro South Fremantle crowd, I would suggest, throughout most of this game. And it is getting very dark here at Subiaco Oval. Souths are 14 9, Claremont, Claremont at 12 16. South very well placed behind play also. Nalder knocks it in towards centre-half forward and Collard to Willie Rioli, not able to break the tackle. Claremont with a chance now as Allen gets it towards Nisham. Allen still can't pick it up. Players diving on top of the ball. Fimino has it. It spills clear to Della. Della with room. Looks to head of the play and Collard will mark. Right on the 50-metre line. I doubt that he can kick it that far. But he's going to make life very uncomfortable for the South, for the Claremont defence. Courageous Mark. Stood his ground. You've got to in a situation like this in the second semi-final. Collard from just outside 50 metres. He can kick it that far. It's a goal. It's a, goal. It's a magnificent goal. And that makes Claremont's job very difficult, given the very few goals that have been scored in this game. South Fremantle have kicked their third goal of the corner and Claremont as yet haven't kicked one in this turn. 15-9 to 12-16, Derek Collard is the player that's given them some breathing space. There's the courageous Mark holding his ground and uh, just marginally outside his distance but a bit of temperament means that players play above themselves and this is applied to Derek Collard who gets the perfect spiral away for a goal. 25 minutes gone. No clean tap. Nisham tried to work it out of the middle. So did Morris Rioli. It comes to Brad Collard. Back to Morris. Tackled by Kickett. Kickett's working hard. He's held. Free kick to Dale Kickett. Left centre wing for the Tigers. We're into time on, oh, Trev. They need a goal. Very quickly, Lewis is off the ground. This is Mann. He must be getting tired. Tackled by Willie Rioli. Nisham. Nisham's kick into the pocket. Ralph! 
Found only be a short quarter, Trev. There hasn't been many goals kicked. Out in front of Sam Grelo. Could be a 28, 29 minute quarter. 11 points the margin. About to go into time on. Ralph from 50 metres out. There's a spectator running on the field. That's a great kick. Chasing the umpire. Yes, a spectator on the ground. Sensation here. There's a sensation here. A spectator's come on to say something to umpire ball, and he's been quickly removed. He's not going to see the finish, I'm afraid. Uh, not too many things, I wouldn't imagine, if he keeps doing that. Well, they've got to stop until they get him off. Yeah, they will. <laughs> so one behind, and he's just lost his cool for the moment, that spectator. I think what he had to say was important. That kick's gone out on the fall or without being touched rather Nisham says give it to me and he's fallen over the fence <laughs> Jared just fell over the fence now he's back with us and he goes short and Robert Solon chips in to take a great mark a bit of experience coming through there he was the man who kicked the ball out of bounds on the fall 26 and a half minutes gone oh that's a very good mark to Richard Geary South look to be holding Claremont at the moment I'd say they've got the second semi one there's the kick to the crest. Jakovic flies. Della tried to knock it on. It's knocked out to accommodate Worsfold. He hooks the centre half forward. John Scott will fly. Almost the mark. Crumbs to Rioli. This is Morris. Over the top. South have got a chance here through Della. It bounces up nicely. From 25 metres out, he goes inboard. The veteran, the champion, he's put it through. Good night, Claremont, in the second semi-final. You'll meet East Fremantle next week, and that's two goals to Morris Real. Oh, yes, and uh, old dogs for a hard road. And Didley split the centre with that. That was dead centre from Morris Rioli, and he would love to be in that situation. That's Della. He's played a real tigerish game today, Merv Della. And over it goes to Morris. Who better to give it to? Perfectly poised on the left foot. And look at that. That is dead centre. And he made no mistake about putting the final nail up in the Claremont coffin. Well, I would have to say a surprise victory. I think it's all over. I don't think Claremont can get back. I think most pundits tip Claremont today. And South have turned the tables. 28 minutes gone. Cla and South from Adelaide lead by 16 points. As the man wins the knock out of the centre. Brayshaw is caught with the ball and is penalised for holding it. The break's going south's way now. I don't think I agree with Keith. I don't think there's time left for, for Clement to steal it. As Mascos kicks across to the outer flank and finds Fimino. Must be very Fimino close to time, Well, From right half back looks for Matera who was pushed in the back. And the free kick's coming a little more easily now. That's Collard getting mixed up with Begovic. Three and a half minutes of time on. Matera with the free kick at right centre wing. He's taking all the time he can. He kicks towards the half forward line. Man was the leaper. He struggled valiantly, valiantly this afternoon for Claremont as Roland kicks to the half forward line. Turnbull and McDonald. McDonald takes the relieving mark. He plays on quickly back towards centre wing and Collard takes the mark. Brad Collard. Sousa 16-9, 105, Claremont 12, 17, 89. Collard kicks in towards centre half forward. Edwards has the ball knocked away. Chance for Matera close to the line, but it beats him out of play. And a big performance this by South. Very big performance indeed. And uh, they haven't had a lot of work, a lot of good work done by Craig Edwards today. That was man over the top of Edwards. This is Willie Rioli. Through the pack he goes, and there's the siren. Souths have won the second semi-final by 16 points. And that is an upset victory. I think it's fair to say that Souths were the underdogs. Souths 16-9, 105, have defeated Claremont 12-17, 89. And Claremont didn't kick a goal in the last quarter, and South have booted four goals, three. So a great final term by the Bulldogs to take off the second semi-final the preliminary final between Claremont and East Fremantle next week and you really wouldn't want to be playing Claremont although they've been beaten today they've certainly played a very good brand of football the main goal scorers for South Fremantle were Peter Matera and Richard Geary who both kicked three Willie Rioli and Morris Rioli both kicked two and for Claremont Tony Evans and Warren Ralph both booted four Ken Casillas 
your leading kick getters on the ground today. For South Fremantle, Willie Rioli, 18 and 7 hand passes. Peter Matera, 18 and 7 hand passes. Morris Rioli had 14. Peter Worsfell on his wing, 12 kicks and 10 effective hand passes. And for Claremont, Scott Rowland had 16 kicks and uh, Peter Thorne had 15 with 9 effective hand passes. Thanks a lot, Ken Casellas and Keith. Very briefly, your best players. Great performance, South Fremantle. Best for South Fremantle. I thought Rioli, Willie Rioli after half time was superb. Ryder in that he came to the fore when South needed him most. Della and Matera, both good players. For Claremont, none better than Mann. I thought he played an exciting game today as a ruckman mainly. Evans, an exciting young player as a rover. Allen, I thought, played very well in the centre and in the, on the half forward flank. Molesso was a strong and purposeful fullback. Begovic, Thorne, and a Scott Rowland. Stan Magro stands proud. His players are jubilant, but there's still one game to go. The second semi final, two games to go, but one for them. The second semi final to South Fremantle here from Subiaco Oval, winning 16 9 to 12 17 by a margin of 16 points. Congratulations to uh, you, Wally Foreman, on a great job today with uh, East Fremantle winning the first semi final replay against West Perth. Thanks for your help today, Wal. To Ken Casillas and also to Keith Slater and to our backup team, including Greg Keeley, down at ground level. Hope you've enjoyed our telecast here from uh, Subiaco Oval on this marathon day of football. We're going to leave you now with the program Sports Explained, which will have some motor racing action for you. And look forward to your company tomorrow morning on Football Sunday at 9 o'clock. <laughs>